today we're going to do an oil change and we're going to install this wireless backup camera made by Type S. I went ahead and I picked this up from Costco and I'm going to try it out and uh, let you know what I think. This is all what comes with the package. You get the monitor right here and then this is the backup camera and it has a wireless connection and a solar panel here so you're supposed to charge it overnight and then when you put it on the car the sun should be able to keep it charged well enough for you to continue to use it since you're only using it for anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds I believe it has a setting where you can adjust how long you want it on. It comes with some mounting hardware, the suction cup mount for if you want to put it on the windshield and then down there it's got the dash mount for the suction cup. The only thing so far I really don't like about it is the fact that the monitor does not have its own battery. So you can't charge it and then unplug it. You have to keep it in plugged in the entire time. Uh, I don't want the wire just hanging around so after I test it again I'm gonna see if I can somehow get that wire in through the dash somewhere so it's not just hanging out. Here's what it looks like mounted on to the back of the vehicle. It's definitely not the prettiest thing and as you can see it really sticks out around the edges. Uh, I used the mount or the mounting brackets that were already on it as they work fine on this car but you may need to put it higher or lower uh, and it is quite thick if you see how much it sticks out there definitely a function over form kind of thing but uh, let's see how it works so I've decided I'm gonna mount it on the dash not up on the windshield uh, up on the windshield a little far and I don't want to put it too high up also, this is activated by waving your hand in front of it, so want it in a, at a reasonable distance. So, I've got it set up to about how I'm going to put it on. I got a piece of electrical tape. I'm going to put just in front of it, so I know where I'm going to mount it. I don't have nails, so I brought a tool. Trusty little pick. Okay. All right, let's go ahead. Make sure nothing's on there. It's nice and clean. And go ahead and drop it on. Get it a little wet. Place it on there. And turn it to lock it. There you go. Slide this guy in. All right, now let's plug it in and try it. All right, it's plugged in. Let's turn the key on. There you are. Pretty decent picture. And you can click and hold on the graph there and move it so that it's level with your driveway. And there you go. You can also remove the lines if you want to. You can also put a front camera on here if you want. It can can support up to two different cameras and it can give you a split view. You can rotate them and so on and so forth. So go ahead and wait for it to turn off and try the hand signal. Screen is turned off. Let's try the hand gesture. Wave. I got it set to near. 
and there you are you can adjust the distance for how far you want to be able to wave your hand for it to work I set it at near so that it's deliberate not when you reach for the radio or for the climate control it uh, it turns on it's pretty nice it's a 6.8 inch uh, wide screen and uh, so far so good so what I wound up doing was dropping the power cord underneath this panel here lifted it up dropped it down through there so it's plugged in there but the only wire exposed is down there then it comes up through here then along the radio bezel and into the screen this way it looks a little cleaner so for the oil change we're gonna go with this Kirkland signature full synthetic 5w30 the van does call for 5w20 however after doing some research especially in a higher mileage van and it's older for everyday use, the 5W30 can actually be better. Uh, shout out to my boys over at Backyard Pit Stop. They're the ones that turned me on to this stuff. And after looking into it, turns out it's pretty good, especially for everyday use. Uh, going with an STP, Extended Life uh, Oil Filter. I couldn't find anything else for the van uh, other than some really cheap stuff, which I didn't want to use. Got my oil filter clamp and my wrench. So let's get started. It's good practice to always crack open the oil filler cap before you drain the oil. Just don't lose it and don't forget to put it back on. On these vans everything is pretty easy to get to in regards to doing an oil change. Your oil pan is on the passenger side of the vehicle and the oil filter is directly next to it so you're not having to look all over the place and it's not in some weird spot unfortunately when you do take off the oil filter you're gonna get oil on one of the lower uh, cross members other than that it's pretty straightforward and also good idea to use a funnel keep the shop towel handy and uh, Keep your eyes down there, make sure you're not making a mess. Fortunately, the oil that came out of the car was pretty clean. It had uh, 5,000 miles on it. I could still see through it as it was draining. It wasn't too dark, it wasn't gritty at all. That, that's a very good sign. Also, the uh, previous owner did a transmission uh, drain and fill every other oil change on this van for the past two years, two, two and a half years. So that's also uh, some good preventative maintenance. All right, let's start it up and check the level. Perfect. I'm going to also try to see if I can restore some of these headlights. They're a little hazy. So I've got the Blue Magic Headlight Lens Restorer. I've used it in the past and it's been alright. I taped around it so I don't uh, damage any of the paint. So I'm going to put some of this on, hit it with my drill buffer, and see if it makes a difference. So here's what they look like after just one quick run. Uh, Definitely better. There's still some right in this area here that I'd like to hit it once more. But for comparison, here's the other light, and they were pretty much identical. So you can see the difference there, all the hazing. So here's what they look like after they're all done. Again, they're not perfect, but I'd say a good 80, 85% better. That's the drivers. And here's the passengers. The passengers still can clean up as good. There's a couple of marks here that uh, after hitting it several times they wouldn't come out, but 
It's definitely better. Definitely a cleaner look. A couple more things just arrived. I've got this AVS bug shield, which we'll be installing, and a replacement shell for the remote, which the casing has cracked. When you go with one of these AVS or any bug shield or deflector, I would highly recommend disregarding the factory uh, or the given clips that come with it as they are just trash. Uh, I test fitted it and they just came right back out so whether you go buy from your local parts store or anywhere else just get some more that fit and use those instead uh, that way it's more secure and it's not going to fall off while driving. With the remote the first thing you want to do is use whether it be a screwdriver or whatever have you to get it open and you want to get the battery out first thing because the easiest way to actually get everything out is to push the buttons and then it just comes out just like that. The new one that I purchased does have the buttons already and the little uh, rubber piece there so all I'm going to take is the actual circuit board with the plastic backing they do give you another plastic backing just in case you need it but since I don't I'm just going to slide this right on in put the battery back in and give it a shot yep it works for the bug deflector, what you want to do is look for where it's going to mount, pull out the existing clips, and the clips that you have, you want to test fit them, make sure they're actually going to work. I also got the tires. I went with the Mastercraft SRT Touring 235 65 16. I got a really good deal on them. I was looking for something a little better maybe, but the deal I got on these, I got the set of all four for less than the cost of two of the Bridgestones that I was looking at. And the rear shocks I went with KYB since that is what the uh, OEM recommends. Also, as far as that backup camera goes, it's been a couple weeks now, and I haven't had any issues whatsoever with it. It seems to be working perfectly. Also, as you can see, the battery is still holding a full charge, so that tells me that the solar panel is working and it is keeping a charge.